Hey everyone, it's Nicole Valoya of NicoleValoya.com and I'm so excited because I have one of my favorite money mindset mentors here, Denise Jeffield Thomas of LuckyBitch.com. Hey. And she is amazing. I have learned so much from her and I'm really excited to be interviewing her today. I asked a bunch of you for questions and you know, this is what I love about working with Denise and being part of her Lucky Bitch Bootcamp, which I've been for, I think, almost a year and a half now, is that, you know, she's so, you're so open about everything you do and how you've come so far with, you know, your money mindset that a lot of the questions that were coming through, like I was like, I could just answer this myself because you give us the exact steps. And I know people are always like, I'm a very like process oriented person. Like I want to know exact steps. Then I'll make it my own, but like I need to know exactly what people did, what they said, like everything. So, and, you know, that's what I love about you. That's what you've done for us. So even I really felt like I could answer a lot of their questions already, but you know, I'm definitely glad to put it up to you because I never know. I shouldn't try to get in your head too much. <laughs> and we can take it to the next level because I think, you know, a lot of us are up leveling. A lot of us who have been in your program for a while, we're really getting to next levels here, you know? And it's, it's a whole new ball game. It's like doing the same things, but tweaking yeah. them. And I, I feel like I keep getting stuck a little bit and I know a lot of people are getting stuck. So I just love to know, how did you, one of the questions actually was, how did you learn about money blocks? Like how did you first get introduced into this? Um, so in my twenties, I was re I just wanted to be an entrepreneur so bad. And I would go to these networking events and it was just all dudes and all guys all wearing suits. And I was just so lost in that world. And then I discovered, um, a few, uh, like women, uh, entrepreneurs. Right. And one of those was Kendall Summerhawk, who is a money marketing and soul mentor. I think mm -hmm. she, she calls herself. And she, she talked about this concept of money blocks and I went, Oh my God, that's why I've been finding it so hard to make money. Right. I knew that I was smart. I knew that I was ambitious. I knew that I could follow a yeah. system or a process and, you know, and do it. But there was just something that was holding me back from making any money. And Kendall was the first person that I had really um, realized that she was in that conversation of like, hang on, you've got some money beliefs yeah. that you need to work on. And um, so I started t talking about the concept of money blocks to my personal business coaching clients. And because that was the missing piece for them too, right. you know, and as a coach, I was getting frustrated. I'm like, why can't you just do these really simple things yeah. that you need to do in your business? And, um, so the results were amazing. And so that's when I, I started teaching group programs and that's when I created my lucky bitch money bootcamp to, uh, to help women with that money piece, that money mindset piece that's so right. missing right. from, um, from success for women. And I think what's interesting is like the money blocks could show up in so many different ways. Like to be honest, when I was first saw your program, like I was intrigued by it, but I have to say, I didn't think I had money blocks because I had no debt. You know, I had no credit card debt anyway. So I didn't have yeah. any bad debt. My only debt was like grad school loans, that kind of thing. <laughs> so it was like, I don't have money blocks. Like I don't have debt. So I only like associated it with that at first. Like, like having spending problems or something like that. But I think that wow. you know, money blocks show up in so many ways. And really like my issue was that I was a nonprofit social worker. So I didn't believe I'd ever make any good money. So that was a money block, but I would have never even really realized it if I hadn't joined the program and worked through some of those things because we put limitations on ourselves in so many ways. That's so true, and that's really interesting hearing that as well, mm -hmm. um, which always goes to show, you know, you need to really explain to people um, what you do and how it benefits right. them. And so that, even for me, I'm like, oh, that's a big aha. I should put that on the sales page. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because at first I was like, oh, this must be for people who, like, don't understand money or, like, don't know how to save money, you know. Mm. But I think that my money blocks were more about, you know, how much I was making and even now, like, I stretch that. And I think, you know, I'd love to know, you know, like, you have been very open in talking about how now, you know, Lucky Bitch Bootcamp is a million-dollar course. But, yeah. you know, I'm sure at first you were just hoping to make it to six figures with that course, you know? And, like, how did you get from, like, lower goals to bigger goals? Well, um, before I did the group program, I mm -hmm. was just working one-to-one um, -one as a coach. So I'd already hit six figures just by doing one-to-one -one right. stuff. 
And the biggest mindset shift for me was I was working really, really hard Mm -hmm. because I was getting up at five o'clock to to service some of my international clients with time zones. And then, you know, I'd have back to back sessions, no time to pee and Mm -hmm. working really late at night. And so many people who are doing that, burning themselves out. And when you think of going, oh my God, I'm, you know, just scraping by six figures here, but I'm dying for it. Like, you know, I'm like, I'm never looking ahead going, I'm never going to be able to have a vacation. Like, how is this going to work? And then you think, oh my God, if I want to make a million dollars, I'm going to have to work 10 times harder than I am now. And um, the the cool mindset shift that, that I made in that was that you can multiply your effort by creating things like group programs, mm-hmm. by writing books, by making e-courses, and that's really the leveraged way to creating more money. But I had to give myself permission for it. It was a money block because I was thinking, oh, it's cheating. Right. You know, it doesn't count unless I'm working really hard for it. So it was really interesting, even as I was putting together the Money Boot Camp, I was still working through a lot of my money blocks as well around, am I allowed to, like, do this and make money right. from it? Is this okay? And um, and it's just, it's grown from there. Right, right, right. And I think that it's so important because it is, it's like different money blocks. And I'm sure even now you found new money blocks as you got into no, new levels. No, it, it's the same money blocks. It's the same money blocks? Uh-oh. <laughs> Same. It's funny, right? You think, oh, um, you know, everyone's got a perception of themselves. When mm. I'm a wealthy person, right. I will be a different person. And you're not. You're the same person with your same stuff. Right. So, I'll, And I'll give you an example, right? So at the very start of my business, I felt guilty making money just from talking to people. Right. You know, I was like, is this okay? Am I just going to talk to someone like and they pay sessions. me for it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So the money block was – that you have to work hard to make money. Right. So I was feeling weird about it, right, conflicted about it. But then when I created my first group program, as mm-hmm. I said, you know, five people in my very first group program, I felt the same way. I was like, am I cheating here? Am I allowed right. to make, you know, more money working less yeah. time? Is that okay? But then when I hit six figures, the same thing happened. When I hit multiple six figures, same thing happened. When I hit a million, same thing happened. Right. I was like, there's so, you know, and I would resist delegating. Uh-huh. You know, I would uh, still do things like do my business to sabotage myself right. because this belief that yeah. you have to work hard to make money is my is personal your, money yeah. block. Mm-hmm. So it follows me. And so whatever yours is, and I'm sure you can probably share what, you know, one of your ahas, that will keep on following you. So it's not necessarily get new ones. I think right. you just find new layers new to layers your old ones. To right. Yeah. So... How do you, now that you are making this money, and I think that this is a question that came up from somebody, and I think this is a good entrance because it is about the harder, is like how do you increase your income while spending time with your family and balancing all that? Does it come down to delegating? Um, yes. So that's a simple answer. It comes down to delegating mm-hmm. and leveraging, creating passive income mm-hmm. sources as well. So you're not having to personally make right. all of the money that you make. Um, I think it is a lot to do with consistency as well. Mm-hmm. So in my business, we do very consistent things right. um, so you're you know, not each week. you all the time. Yep, and we've managed to batch those as well. So we're not kind of scrambling week to week. Things like content and mm-hmm. you know, creating blogs and stuff like that, we can batch those now ahead of time. Um, I don't have a big as big a team as probably people think that I do. Um, I don't have any full-time staff. I've got just contractors and, mm-hmm. and just part-time people to help me out. So I actually work less than I do when I was making six figures. Mm-hmm. And um, But that's a belief. I think that question comes from a belief of like, oh, I d- you know, having a big business means that I'll have no time for my kids right. or no time for my family. So I want people to always um, check in with themselves around what mm-hmm. beliefs you've got right, around right. making more. Yeah. What what do you think you have to give up in order to have a bigger business and make more money? Right. And I think that's important because I think that it is like people get stuck when scaling a little bit because they're like, well, if I hire help, then I have to work harder to pay the help, like to pay my support staff. Yes, but you can start really small. So my assistant has been with me, Amber. She's lovely. She's been with me for, I think, three years or so. Mm-hmm. She started out at five um, hours a week. Right. And she only really 
you know, I think I still made it to a million dollars with her only working like 10 hours a week or something. <laughs> right. you know, and I've only just increased her hours now. She works 30 hours a week for me now. And, and that's only recent that we increased it that much. And it was more just thinking, you know, oh, I just like, I want to grow bigger next year. So right. I'm going to, you know, she can take some things off my plate. But people think that you're going to have to have this horrible big team to manage. Mm-hmm. It's going to be very expensive. Right. And it, it really doesn't have to. You know, I actually even did a post about what it costs to run a million-dollar business. And most of those costs are variable costs. You right. know, they're, they're not fixed costs. My fixed costs are pretty much the same from when I had right. a much, much smaller business. Right. So for people who are starting out, they want to know, how do you not get discouraged when you don't see those, like, measurable results right away? Yes, this is key. So you have to have one eye on what's happening now and the actions you need to take to bring in the money now. Mm -hmm. And you have to have one eye on the future to where you're going. Right. And, you know, if you've got a big vision for your life, you have to be in both of those places at the same time. You can't just live in the future because then you just don't get anything done Mm -hmm. and you're not, you know, in your real world. And you can't just be in the plodding, you know, because when you're in business, there's a lot of crap to do. There's a lot of crap to get through sometimes. And there's a lot of fears to get through. And it can be very easy to be stuck in that space. Um, The way I say it too is it's being in business at the start is like having an apprenticeship, Mm -hmm. you know, where you're kind of very low paid and overworked. And, but the problem is you don't know how long that apprenticeship is going to last for. Right. And a lot of people give up before their apprenticeship is over yeah, and they start to, I see that all the to create time. It's momentum. So, sad. so how do you like continue with the good mindset practices and things like that and the techniques um, when you really aren't seeing those results? Is it just like a determination? Like you said, the consistency doing it. Anyways? Yes. But yeah, it's a mindset that um, you're going to get through it no matter what, mm-hmm. you know, and it's right. like, this is just a test. This is just my apprenticeship. Um, I think things like emotional freedom technique work at every stage of your business to right. help you, um, you know, get over those blocks and those fears, especially at the start. I think fear is probably the, one of the biggest things that derails new entrepreneurs because they, they don't know how to deal with it. They don't have a community around right. them to help them deal with it. They don't maybe have mentors in their life to help them get over that sort of stuff. And it's, so it's very key that you have to keep yourself um, as in a positive mindset as possible and just remind yourself, I'm just getting through this, getting through this. Mm-hmm. I, I, I can do it. I can get through it and knowing that there's something better on the other side. Right, right. And when you do fall off track with those practices, how do you get back to them? Do you create new ones? Is it maybe you've outgrown them? You know, No, I really don't. I think those basics work all of the time. Um, so sometimes you just have to get back on the wagon, you know, forgive yourself for any mistakes that you've made. Cause sometimes new entrepreneurs, especially make a mistake and they let it derail them for such mm-hmm. a long time. So sometimes you have to do some self forgiveness, you know, you let yourself give yourself permission. That it's okay to learn from mistakes. You can write, this is why I'm so open. I love writing about my mistakes because it makes me feel better right. about them. Yeah, for that's, sure. a, that's a tip by the way. And people love it too. So, um, no, I think the basics work. And I think maybe sometimes people think that there's a a magic formula or a silver bullet that people know that they Mm -hmm. don't. And it's not true. Everyone everyone has to go through the basics. Uh, Yeah, I do think the magic bullet is, like, doing the work, which no one wants to hear. (laughs) That's the magic bullet is doing the work, which, like, nobody wants to hear. But it is doing, like, the EFT every day, you know, because that means that you're addressing it. You're not just, like, ignoring it. You know, like you're addressing the block or the fear or the anxiety and you're working your way through it versus, you know, sweeping it under the rug for like a little bit longer. Um, Exactly. Now, what about like, how do you recommend setting sustainable and measurable goals? Should they be measurable or sustainable? Like what, you know, like what does that even mean? Or is that a block too, if you're kind of like limiting yourself? (coughs) I see a huge block. Um, for goals for women, right? And I think people fall into two camps. Mm -hmm. One, we've got the people who set massive, massive big goals straight out the gate. Right. And they've never even, you know, gotten a client or they've never made any money. And they're like, a million dollars or nothing. Mm -hmm. And you're like, okay, that's cool. (laughs) I love people that have big goals. 
but what's your like next, you know, like weekly right. goal? You're not going to make a million dollars in the next week. Right. So let's set it like, let's set an interim yeah. goal between zero a and a million. Goal. So that's, that's one camp. The other camp are people who have this belief that if they set goals, it's going to block them. And mm-hmm. we probably see this in the boot camp I think that's as my well. camp. <laughs> oh, okay, cool. I think you've probably seen this at the boot camp as well where we talk about tracking your money right. and setting goals, right? And people go, oh, guys, I've been tracking my money and I set a goal and everything has gone to crap. So I'm going to go straight back to where I was before where I was like, you know, no not goals, goals, no expectations. Failing, right. I don't want to know what's going on. Mm-hmm. And I think that's not a reality. That's just a belief. That's a belief that if I set goals, they won't come true. And you know where I think that came from? For all of us. Where? Tell this me. This is really bizarre, right? <laughs> you know when you're a kid and you have a birthday party? Right. You blow out your candles and what do your parents tell you? Like, make a wish but don't tell anybody about it. Right. Because why? It won't come true. Oh, that's true. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm not saying that's the thing, but isn't that interesting that it's so ingrained in us to not tell people our goals because it won't come true? And we know from goal setting, law of attraction, personal development, there's so much power in speaking out loud what you want Mm -hmm. and words have power. When you take that power away from yourself, then it's, it can be really difficult to, to create your goals because you're you're not even allowing yourself to speak them out loud. So I think, you know, there is a kind of a third way Mm -hmm. around goals and that's just being you know, setting goals that resonate with you, that feel really right. good for you, goals that you can speak out aloud and give power to, and without having those extremes of not having any goals or million dollars or bust. <laughs> right, right, right. And, you know, now as you're saying that, I'm just thinking the other thing, too, is that people feel a lot of shame if they don't, like, reach their goals. So we feel like there's also that piece where they want to keep it to themselves. They don't want to talk about it. It's like, it's, I feel like we're, I think because also because, you know, we're a very like instantaneous like society. We want our gratification now, like short term gratification. And it's like, you know, there is that piece of reworking things, you know, and trying again a different way. And I think that, you know, we get stuck in that where it doesn't work the first time. So we're like, yeah. done, failed, instead of like kind of looking at it and, and trying a different way. Yeah, absolutely. And um, it's okay, you know, if you've had a goal that hasn't come true, you, again, it doesn't mean that the universe doesn't like you. Sometimes, and this is a good segue actually in, you know, I know you're going to put a link to my manifesting course. I find um, people try – just manifest by sheer will. They're mm-hmm. like, I'm just going to do it. And there, there is a process of manifesting stuff. And step number two is about really defining what it is that you want. And it sounds easy, but I think a lot of us, it's an unused muscle right? knowing what we want and really articulating what it is that we really want. Um, and especially for women, we're not used to being able to do that. We're kind of like, oh, whatever. I, even this is a perfect example. My mother-in-law was visiting and I would say to her, would you like a cup of tea? And she'd go, oh, I don't know, whatever you think, if you're going to make one, if it's not too much trouble. And I'm like, it's a freaking cup of tea. <laughs> like it's not a big deal. Right. But it just shows that for some women, they're not used to even be able to have any choice. And it feels like sometimes we say to the universe, oh, whatever you want to send me is fine. You know, oh, whatever, if it's not too much trouble. Right. And we're not used to um, – like really just saying, actually, I'd like it like this, like this, like this, and yeah, cool, by this time. Mm-hmm. Right. So being really clear and specific. And I think, you know, in terms of that sustainable and measurable piece, like really looking at like what do you need to sustain the lifestyle you want? Because I think that exactly. other people, people don't know the numbers. You know, exactly. Sorry, I was just making a note because I was like, oh, I have to write an article about three types of goal setters. <laughs> Thank <right>. you. <laughs> Before I forget it. Yeah. Um, you're, yeah, you're right. It's all about that specific, being specific and measurable. Because they see that a lot too where it's like, okay, well, you want this number. And even for me, like I'm a few dollars short of my income goal this year and it's, you know, we have three months left. So now I'm like, what do I do? Like, do I just take off the rest of the year? You know, like, no, not really. Cause that, that's not good for me because I could lose momentum. But it's like, now what, like, how do I go bigger? Like, is it now that then this becomes a struggle, like sustaining this, like, you know, or do I reach for more? That's a good one. Yeah. That's a great one. So again, there's a, blo- there's a mindset block in there, right? That mm-hmm. this was a fluke. 
I can't sustain right. this. I'm never going to do this again. Maybe I have to, you know, maybe I cheated my way into this one. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I totally get that, that one. That's that's a really key one. So it's, it's always the mindset. Always go back to what am I making this mean? Um, and, yeah, you can set another goal if you want. You know, you can right. – um, sometimes people do it because it's like, well, that's never enough. So I have to get better and better and better. So what I would suggest that when you hit your goal mm-hmm. for the year, celebrate, right? anchor it in, take like, yeah, take a week off, give yourself some, um, you know, some rewards for hitting mm-hmm. that. Cause that's a big thing too, right? We just go done next. I know. Um, so you've, yeah. Right. So you've got to anchor it in. And then for the next couple of months of the year, why don't you just set a fun goal? Right. You know, you can go, hey, what, wouldn't it be fun if we could do X on top, mm-hmm. you know, and, and set a good reward for that one too. Yeah. So it's definitely good to just keep, you know, have, and I think that's so important is we take it so seriously. And I get it. It's serious. You know, money is serious. We do have expenses, yeah. et cetera. But yeah. I think there does have to be some play into it as business owners because otherwise it just feels like such a struggle all the time and it's you know I hear I always hear my clients say that like well I need to make this and it's like okay like let's change the need because right away I think when you have that need it's like it gives you that desperate energy yeah it does and it's and it puts that pressure it does it puts a huge amount of pressure and so I think what you said a couple of minutes ago of of knowing what what you need to Mm -hmm. make is really key because and I'll give you a really practical example. We see this in the boot camp a lot where people go, oh, guys, I want to buy this house, this dream house that just came up. And they're like, oh, but it costs X. you know. And you go, well, it doesn't actually mm-hmm. because you're not paying that full amount. You pay your percentage of the right. amount, that amount and the rest of it's mortgage. So why don't you go find out from a mortgage broker <laughs> how much you need right. to buy that house? But then they're like, oh, but I can't go see a mortgage broker. Like I – I don't have, and it's like, no, you've got to act as if you've got to get into that practical sense of, well, how much is it actually going to cost you? Because it's not going to cost you the full amount to buy the house. So you're beating yourself up that you can't get this full amount, which who buys a house in, in full in cash? Like right. not that many people, right? But it just shows how we internalize things all the time and make it like, oh, I'm not good enough. Oh, I can't do it. That's not for me. Whereas in reality, we just haven't we just haven't gotten organized and practical of what it's actually going to take. Right. So what are your go-to practices when you're setting a new goal for yourself? Like even for this new launch of lucky bitch bootcamp, like I'm sure you have a goal in mind of how many people you want to see in or how many, how much money. So like, what do you start? Like, what's your practice? Like, what do you put in place? Are you like tapping on it every day? (laughs) Yeah, no, that's a great question. So our goal, um, our goal for this launch is a thousand new, members into mm-hmm. into the boot camp and um we it's funny we've got this big chart and it's got a thousand little squares right. in it and we're coloring it in <laughs> each time I do that and, too like every month I set my new goal whether it's a number of clients or dollars in it alternates depending yeah. like that month what I feel like focusing on yeah I just cross it off <laughs> yeah so we're doing that we're doing tapping um, when I say we, this is me and my husband, cause my husband's helping with this launch. And, um, so we're doing tapping at night before we go to bed. We're talking about, um, what that money is going to help us achieve. We're talking, oh, this is a cool one. Um, I was driving, yes, some into town yesterday and I was listening to the radio and I thought, no, let's turn it off. And I started doing an interview as if someone was interviewing me saying, Oh, how did your, you know, how did your launch go? Right. And this is a technique that I did a couple of years ago. I, I used to be driving my crappy car, like up and down the freeway mm-hmm. to see my mom. And I would do an interview as if Oprah was interviewing me. And this is when I was very, very starting up my business. Like I barely owned anything. And, you know, it'd be like, so Denise, you know, how does it feel to be making six figures? How does it be? So I do the same thing now. It's right. like, oh, Denise, what, how was it like, you know, having a million dollar launch? Well, it was great. So it's all of those things that kind of add up into your belief that make it feel like it's possible for you. Um, so, yeah, I do the same stuff as I teach in my manifesting right. course. I do the same stuff as I teach in the boot camp. Um, I always go back to basics and, so and visualization, follow that kind of five stage. EFT. And it does sound like not just a visualization of the goal, but like just visual reminders of the goal, which I know I am a very visual person. So seeing the numbers, like seeing it decreasing, it smaller. Like that's very yes. helpful for me. 
Exactly. So it could be that, you know, you set up a dashboard. Um, I use Infusionsoft and you can set up a dashboard for sales. Um, you know, it could be that you have a spreadsheet mm-hmm. and you update it. I update my income spreadsheet multiple times a day, if not mm-hmm. just once a day. So it's it's things like that. The numbers might be different to when I started out, but really I do the exact same techniques that got me here. Mm-hmm. Right. So stick with what works. <laughs> and that's the Stick thing like people fall off track but it's like go back to what works you don't have to recreate it if that was working for you just start doing it again exactly and stop thinking that people have a magic formula is what I said before where you think oh you know rich people mm-hmm. must know something that I don't it's like no they really don't right. and I know that now and I see it I'm like oh it's it's pretty much the same <laughs> right 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 just a couple of extra zeros Right. Now, somebody wanted to know, what are your best mantras and affirmations? I have several that I love to use. One is, um, I serve, I deserve. Okay. Yes, because that's that really shows that you have to give and receive. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, you, you show up, you serve people, you deserve to get paid in return. Right. You I deserve to have good things yeah. happen to you in return. So that's a good one. Um, it's my time and I'm ready for the next step. Mm-hmm. I say that one all the time and I always have from the very start of my business. And um, today is my lucky day is another one to remind yourself that to don't delay and don't procrastinate taking right. action. You have to do it now, today. And um, let me think of another one that uh, that I use. I think they're pretty much, oh, my face is my fortune. <laughs> <laughs> That's another one that I do a lot too. Whenever I'm feeling blocked around being visible you know I think oh, mm-hmm. I don't want to do a Facebook live or you know oh, I don't want to I don't want to post on social media then I remind myself no my face is my fortune you have to show up and be visible it's so true you do have to you know being visible for you has definitely helped a lot like you said you know what works for you now at this point in time and I think that sometimes does that's where people sabotage it it's like they think it's gonna stop working for them so they're like let me try something else before it stops working or, you know, before it plateaus and they forget to do what has been wor- like, you know, has been working all along or has brought you to this point so far. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So we think that's important. So are there any like best tips for someone who like, what's your best tip for someone who's like really just starting out and noticing the blocks? Like I said, <laughs> you know, I didn't think I had blocks. Um, well, the, the thing is awareness is going to be, really the first mm. thing to do about <laughs> me um so even just being in that conversation of like I wonder if I do have money blocks like right. that's a really great place to start and to go hmm, if if I did what would they be right you know that's I think that's a really cool thing too and um but if this is something that's really blocking you right now and you know that you have um some maybe some unhealthy relationships mm. with money or uh, you know that you could be earning more if you hit a plateau, then to do something about it would be to read my book, listen mm-hmm. to one of my free courses and potentially join the Lucky Bitch Money Boot Camp to not have to do it yourself, to be in community with other women and to kind of take those, tool, those tools to go really deeper into finding mm-hmm. out what those money blocks are particularly your particular money block. You know, as I said, I've got mine, which is working hard to make money. And, you know, you've got to find out what yours is as well. And the cool thing, you know, when someone said you're just beginning, there are people at all stages Mm -hmm. of money who are in this conversation as well around money blocks. So don't think it's just a beginner's problem. Right. It's, you know, it, it really doesn't matter how much money you're making. You can still have money blocks. Yeah. And I think it is, it's more about that beginning awareness of like, oh, something's up here. I didn't realize this was a pattern or belief that could be changed. Like I thought it was situational or I thought it was, you know, blaming family stuff. (laughs) Yeah. I think we all have the power to really put in place the techniques that you've talked about to really change things up and, and, you know, pass through these blocks or continue to just be able to keep pushing them, pushing the boundaries. Yes. 
exactly. And I know that you've um, you've got some links of my stuff as well mm-hmm. that you can. Yeah, you know, Do you want to tell people about where they can go for some more info? Yes. So for your manifest worksheet, um, manifest video series, actually, which is so great, <laughs> they can go to nicoleloya.com slash ggt manifest, and then for your boot camp, which you're going to be doing live, which I'm so excited about because when I joined the boot camp, I know. <laughs> when I joined the boot camp, it was like you're always present. Like I said, you're present in the Facebook group all the time, always jumping in, answering our questions, supporting us. So, you know, that's why it was easy for me to know some of the things you're going to say because I see you and you you are so consistent. You know what I mean? Like we want to get a different answer sometimes. <laughs> you know what I mean? I I'm sure everybody is like, no, like, tell me for real this time how to get that house. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> tell me something different. Maybe she'll have a different answer. But you know, that's the truth is you are consistent with these practices. They've helped so many of us in the boot camp, you know, take our businesses, take our lives to the next level. And it's gonna be, I think, so rewarding for people who are joining now to be able to participate live and have you talking to us, answering questions, you know, being in the group on Facebook lives and things like that. And anybody who wants to sign up and join us for that, which is starting in November, they can go to NicoleBeloya.com slash bootcamp. Um, yes. And, and if you join by the 27th of October, there is an early bird price on that too. So you can save $500. And um, the big deal about live, I guess, is that we, I haven't done a live version of Bootcamp in three years. And by live, it means live Q&As, mm-hmm. you know, we do calls, we do um, all that kind of stuff. And everybody doing it all at the same time. You know, it's been an evergreen course now for three years, which has been great. But, you know, the, it's this one time only t- right. chance. And to be honest, I don't know if I'll do it again. Maybe we'll do it once once a year. I, I have no idea. But it just it hasn't happened. And we're... It, you know, if you've been wanting to work on your money box, now is the perfect time. If you've been mm-hmm. thinking about joining boot camp, now is the perfect time. So I what's agree. that? What's so, the link again for the manifesting course? It's DDT Manifest. Mm-hmm. It's DDT as in, Manifest. As in my initials, mm-hmm. Denise Duffield Thomas, DDT Manifest. Yeah. And then it's slash boot camp right, for your right. link. Yeah. Perfect. And I'll put those in below, but absolutely, it's definitely easy to get to and – you know, you may, I think ha- going through the the little video series, it's just going to be a great start for people. But, you know, the reality yeah. is the boot camp does do the deep dive into everything. And that's something yeah. that, you know, like I keep saying, this is something that you have to do at every level. This isn't a one-time course. Like this, that's what's so awesome about getting in on this course is it's something you're going to reuse. Like I'm like, okay, end of year, like I've reached my goals. Now I can feel like some blocks are coming on. Like keep yourself playing small, you know. So now I have to definitely stretch too and go back through the work. So it's perfect timing for me to go through it live for sure. Um, perfect. And yeah. it's, I, it's funny. It always comes up at perfect times for me as well. You know, I've, I've got big, um, big goals that I want to hit too. So it's like, oh, well, I'm excited to go through through it as well and go through the material, which I think will be really fun. So, yeah, just to, to wrap up, I'd just love to say if anyone's Um, wanting to join again now is the perfect time to jump on and join us we're an amazing beautiful supportive community and it really is that chance to deep dive into your money blogs yes so I will have the link below and it's nicolelaloya.com slash bootcamp so go check it out and everybody get in and join us because it's going to be really it's and it's so much more powerful when you're going through it with other people Exactly. Like cool. I always try to Thank go you. through it with one friend. So going it through it with thousands is going to be, I think, so much. Well, three thousand people are already in there as well, and so anyone who's been um, in the boot camp for a while, everyone gets to join on on stuff too. So the momentum is going to be really amazing. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for being here today and helping everybody just break through these things. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me, and um, yeah, I'll see you in the boot camp group, as always. (laughs) Bye. Bye.